For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. In the beginning of December, the forces of Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo launched a joint operation in the DRC against the rebel group Allied Democratic Forces or ADF. The claim has been that this group is associated with the Islamic State. Close to 1,700 Ugandan troops have entered the DRC as part of this operation. The presence of Ugandan troops in the DRC has been a contentious matter due to its earlier invasion in the late 90s when it was accused of a lot of atrocities and crimes. Similarly, there have also been questions about the nature of ADF and if it's actually associated with the IS. Earlier in March, the United States had also declared the ADF as a terrorist organization. What is the ADF and what is its history? How is the Ugandan military operation in the DRC being perceived? What is the role of the US in the conflict? Kambale Musawuli of the Center for Research on the Congo addresses these questions. Indeed, I mean, it's, it's, there's some question that Congolese people are asking themselves uh, on the ground. You know, why, after two decades of war, an invading country, uh, Uganda, is now in the DRC? I mean, we have to really put it in the proper context, but let's look at the ADF first. Uh, the Allied Democratic Forces is a surgeon group uh, that's been operating in DRC since the mid-1990s. Um, it's a group that claims that, ha uh, that has uh, Islamic beliefs, and then people try to extrapolate uh, this belief to meaning, jihad, terrorism, and so on. Um, but they have a political claim. Uh, they believe that the president of Uganda, who's been in power since 1996, should not be in power, and they're fighting uh, from the political angle. That's an aspect sometimes that's forgotten. And they've been in DRC, as I said, since the early 1990s. And in the period they've been in DRC, Uganda and Rwanda have been on the, uh, in the area where they operate you know, for the past two decades. Uh, as you know, Congo has known a war that started in 1996 with two invasions of its neighbors, Rwanda and Uganda. And they have occupied the territory of the Congo. Uh, they illicitly uh, exported, uh, extracted Congo's minerals. Uh, it's been documented in numerous UN reports on the illegal pilfering of Congo's resources. And even worse, uh, Rwanda and Uganda uh, fought each other uh, in the eastern part of Congo in a town called Kisangani, where uh, they were fighting over a diamond mine. And during the fight, um, they uh, dropped over 4,000 bombs in the city. Um, and the victims of that war still wait uh, for justice. And there was, of course, the obvious, the UN condemnation of the attacks. Uh, the other element that's really important to look at even uh, the entering of Ugandan uh, soldiers is the political and historic connections of the conflict in the Congo with Uganda. Uh, Congo sued the Uganda, uh, sued Uganda at the International Court of Justice uh, for war crimes, uh, for pilfering of Congo's resources and so on. Uh, they won uh, the case at the ICC in 2005, at the ICJ, I'm sorry, in 2005. And the ICJ ordered uh, Uganda to pay about over $4 billion of reparation to the DRC. So that's a very important context. Uganda today, which, which is entering the Congo to go after so-called ascension groups, owe the Congo over $4 billion in reparation. Uh, because of war crimes, because of pilfering resources. And they have operated in the region where these rebels are, and they have never stopped them. Now, as I say in the beginning, we all were informed that they're coming into the DRC to go after the ADF. The first question that I had in my head is, why is this happening after almost two to three uh, years campaign of the US government of connecting rebels in the DRC to ISIS. No, the US State Department and the Pentagon have continuously stated that the uh, insurgent group, ADF, is connected to ISIS. We have no evidence that they're able to provide. But we have people who have provided evidence about who ADF is. You know, the UN group of experts every year publish a report about the situation in the DRC. And in their report, um, they have clearly stated categorically that the ADF and certain group in the DRC 
has no connection whatsoever with ISIS. But we know what that means. Whenever the term ISIS and terrorism is used, um, we know that you will have US military presence. You know that we have oil, uh, more than likely in those areas. And that's what we see unfold with the US propaganda campaign of connecting ADF to ISIS, we see increased militarization. So the entering of Ugandan soldiers in the URC was very predictable. Um, and they enter in the area that's very rich of oil. And I predicted a year ago, uh, even much uh, before that, in the mid 2000, in Lake Albert, a lake that's at the border of, of uh, Uganda and DRC, uh, over 2 billion barrels of oil was discovered. Um, the killings in that region started about a decade ago, targeted at very specific villages. The killings were usually attributed to the ADF. UN group of experts say that it's a mixture of insurgents. You know, some of them speak foreign languages, others speak, speak local languages, and the ADF itself, uh, not connected to ISIS, does not have the military uh, power, uh, military might to do many of the operations that's taking place there. So now we have oil in Lake Albert, to be in balance of oil. Who is controlling this oil? We have Total, the French oil company. Uh, that's controlling this all. So we have clearly connected the killing, the inhumane killing that's happening in the DRC in the east, where the Ugandan forces have now crossed over directly to the discovery of this oil, a tacit displaced, uh, displacement of the population in the area rich of ours, then being presented as um, uh, no, rebels massacring them. And are they clear connection between the insurgents and Total as their own company? I think the future will let us know uh, how we can connect it. But as we've seen with Iraq, with Afghanistan, with US military engagement, the US special forces now in DRC uh, working with the Congolese army, Uganda forces, which work with the US military, all of them concentrating their military power where there is oil, we clearly can say it's really about oil. Not because of you said it, because on uh, African intelligence this week uh, in December, um, it, they have an article where they're clearly stating that Total Energies, not a Total uh, subsidiary in Uganda, is very happy with the military operations in the RC because it brings some form of peace and stability in the area. So we know it's connected to oil. But what's the way forward? You know, I think, you no. Know, Today we're talking about ADF, tomorrow we may talk about another rebel militia, but we really need to understand the essence of Congo's conflict. At the center of Congo's conflict is that the Congolese people, since his mother their founding in 1885, they have not been able to control their land, their resources, and virtually uh, the, um, their sovereignty. So our struggle since 1885, even with the coming of Patrice Lumumba in 1960, has been that we want to make sure that the resources of the Congo benefit the Congolese people, that the land belongs to the people themselves so they can transform the, the country and transform the African continent. But through uh, that process from 1996 now to present, in the Congolese struggle of controlling their land and resources, uh, they found themselves in war over vengeance, the 96 war, they have taken the lives of over 6 million uh, people. We, uh, they have seen uh, mining cooperation illegally uh, um, pilfering Congo's resources, in the case of the coal town, the cobalt, that's using electric vehicles and so on. And now with a military, what I'll call a military occupation of Uganda soldiers in the Congo, while the Congolese people are not clear why they are there, and it's a deal between the president of the Congo um, and uh, Uganda, a military occupation and still no discussion about justice. As I said a moment ago, Uganda owes Congo over $4 billion of reparations for war crimes and uh, pilfering of Congo's resources. Until they pay their reparation, they have no business being in DRC. And we Congolese will continue to fight to regain our sovereignty and regain control of our land. Thank you.